for convenience sake, let's pass all this data into a single object, which we will call our data object. And that way, we can always simply refer to the pieces of data from that object using normal general referencing syntax. We'll have an object called data, and we'll make it of type aircraft data. And we have a special object input keyword called parameters. If you specify parameters, and as the value, you give a P list, then Gendel will assume that all the keys in that P list match input slots for the child object type. So in this case, instead of repeating each and every keyword on the inputs for this object, we will simply pass as parameters the data list. But now we have to have an object type aircraft data, which accepts inputs for all those keys. And for its input slots, we'll list out all the keys that are in our data file. So let's go back to the data file, and we can simply copy-paste this entire thing in here, and then get rid of the values and just keep the keys as symbols. So remember, control meta Q to line everything up. Now we'll go through and get all the values out of here, because those come in from the file. Uh, in Gendel, the message names can be keyword symbols, but they don't have to be keyword symbols. Let's go ahead and remove those colons. So here we have our aircraft data object, which should answer all these messages, and we populate it with the data from our data file by passing in parameters. Let's compile this and test it a little bit. So the data is now an object of type aircraft data. The data should answer, for example, a wing C root, and there it is. It should answer a wing thickness, so it does so we assume that the data is making it into this object. Now finally we have the data being read into our object from a data file and now the purpose is to remove as much hard-coded data as possible from our actual definition so that data can be maintained in an outside file and someone doesn't have to go in and edit source code in order to change what is essentially data. So with our data object in view so that we can see what the names on these are, for the wing the dihedral is called the wing dihedral. So we would go for the data wing dihedral. And the C root, of course, will be the data wing C root. The C tip will be the data wing C tip wing span. Perhaps this one sixth should be in the data file as well. The wing thickness be the data wing thickness. The fuselage, we have fuselage diameter for the D, the data fuselage diameter, and for the length, the data fuselage length. And that should be all the hard-coded data that we have right now. So there is no more obvious hard-coded data. So let's go ahead and compile this and test that our plane still appears correct. And it looks like we have the same preemie plane. Now to test the data file, let's go ahead and make a change in the data file and see that we do not have to compile any code in order to reflect that change in the data file. Let's bring up the aircraft data one, and let's actually save this with another name to match the preemie plane two. Let's call this aircraft data two dot dat. That way we can make changes here and they won't affect other versions of the preemie plane. So let's try changing the wingspan to 50, for example. Now I simply saved that file. There's no compiling because this is just a data file. And now we'll go back to our model and, and I don't see any change in the wingspan. So what happened? Uh, we didn't update the code to point to the new name that we're using for the data file. The data file is called aircraft data 2 now to match preemie plane 2. So we simply change our data file name. We do have to compile that and now we update data 2. Oh, it should just be called aircraft 2.dat. Here's how you can rename a file right from within Emacs. If you have this file open and do a find file, now simply hit enter when the directory comes up. Now you have a view of this directory called a directory editor. And you can use N to move down, P to move up through these file names. Now I want to rename this aircraft data 2.dat, so I simply do an uppercase R, and Emacs prompts me for a new name for this file. And we'll just call it aircraft2.dat. And now the file has been renamed. The buffer that it was open in is also renamed. Now we'll go back to our preview plane 2 and make sure that this name matches. Aircraft2.data, compile, and update. And now we have a long wingspan preview plane. So to make sure that this is respecting the new data, let's change the wingspan back to 30 in the data file. Save that. Again, no compiling. It's just a data file. And back to tasty and update again. And now we have the shorter wings again because the update forced the model to recompute basically everything that's in the model. So it reread the data from the data file path when we did the update.